Welcome back to another YouTube video. It's your tutor, Disha. Today, I will be working the Cape Environmental Science Unit 1, June 2021, Paper 2. Ecosystem X is a savanna ecosystem that contains mainly herbivores and a few top carnivores. In 2016, there was an extreme drought and as a result, most of the vegetation died. First part, define the term limiting factor. So a limiting factor is anything that hinders the growth, abundance, or distribution of an organism in an ecosystem. Part two, name one density-dependent limiting factor and one density-independent limiting factor. So to understand what these are, I have placed the definitions here and also examples of each for density Dependent factors, these would include the availability of food, parasitism, and predation. Independent here would include natural disasters. And then it says briefly explain how each factor's name in A2 may impact organisms in ecosystem X. So recall in predation, one organism called the predator kills and consumes another organism called the prey. The predators would kind of stabilize the population. They consume the vulnerable prey, such as the old, injured, sick, or very young, leaving more food for the survival and success of healthy prey animals. They also control the size of the prey population. On the other hand, for the density independent factor, which is natural disaster, with the instance of a natural disaster in ecosystem X, habitats could be destroyed as well as the food sources. Moving on to B, table one shows the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis for a species of plant. Table one, effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. Oh, they're asking you to plot a graph that represents the data in table one. I have taken the data from table one and I have plotted here a line graph to show the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis. Recall rate goes on the y-axis, light intensity on the x. Recall you must label your axis, have an appropriate legend and an appropriate title. It also says here to identify with an x the point at which light intensity stop being a limiting factor. Let's do that. All right. It also says to describe the effect of light intensity as a limiting factor on the species of plant at point X. Further increasing the light intensity does not increase the rate of photosynthesis because the enzyme Rubisco is saturated. Moving on to part C, explain two human activities that may have an impact on ecological succession. So human activities such as logging or clearing land to cultivate the land destroy habitats and reduces species diversity. Secondly, activities such as excessive fishing or livestock grazing can change a biological community so much that it is replaced by a different community. Moving on to part two, define the term species diversity. Species diversity is the number and relative abundance of species found in a community. Explain the rule of energy transfer from the lowest trophic level to the highest trophic level in an ecosystem. The flow of energy through the ecosystem initiates with photosynthesis. And during this process, autotropes produce sugars using the energy from the sun, right? So in a sense, autotropes make energy available in the food chain or in the ecosystem, right? So they occupy the first trophic level. Once that is achieved, then the plants or their products will be consumed by herbivores at the second trophic level. Then at the third trophic level, you have secondary consumers like carnivores. And then at the fourth, you have top carnivores and so forth, right? The problem here with the rule of energy transfer is that as energy moves from trophic levels to trophic level, energy will be decreased. 
or lost via heat, right, from metabolic processes like respiration. And as a matter of fact, only 10% of energy in the food is assimilated and is available for the next trophic level. So in a sense, if you start with 100%, at the first trophic level, by the time it gets to the second, it's 10. By the time it gets to the third, it's 1. By the time it gets to the fourth, it's 0.1. Part C, table 2 shows a list of organisms collected by a marine biologist from the sea off the coast of Barbados. Look at table 2. It shows the organisms collected from the sea off the coast of Barbados. It says, use the information in table two to construct a simple food web in the space provided. Here is my food web. Always remember your title. And I hope you are cognizant that phytoplankton is the producer. The next question says, calculate the species diversity for the organisms in table two. Species diversity is no, okay. Let's go back to table two, take a quick look at table two. All right, the first thing I, if you go to the exam and they ask you to calculate species diversity, the best formula to use is the Simpsons index. Here is the formula, right? Next, I encourage you to draw a table. So D here represents the diversity of species. The capital N represents the total number of organisms, all species combined. And the smaller N represents the number of individuals of a particular species. Creating the table here makes the data easy to calculate when you're in the examination. Letting out the values here from my table, you would arrive that the diversity is equal to 4.017. Part D, discuss the relationship between species diversity and ecosystem stability. To answer this question, you can start by defining the terms. Again, species diversity is defined as the number of species and abundance of each species that live in a particular location. And ecosystem stability refers to the capability of the ecosystem to apply mechanisms to return to a steady state after environmental disturbances. Right? So how can we link these two together? Well, an increase in the number of species or the larger the species diversity, right? That is going to increase the ecosystem stability, right? The greater the ecosystem will be able to bounce back after disturbances because there are more species. Moving on to module two, question three, it says, figure two depicts the concept of demographic transition. First corresponding question from this figure, name two of the demographic transition and outline one characteristic of this stage. So now you might be saying, miss, what is this diagram about? So it is a demographic transition model and it shows the demographic history of a country. It demonstrates the transition from high birth and high debt rates to low birth and low debt rates as a country develops. Stage two is the early expanding phase. And one characteristic of this is that the debt rates is lowered while the birth rates remain high. Next question, give one example of a country or region which is in stage two of the demographic transition. And I would say here, most of the Caribbean countries are in this stage. Part three, a country is in stage three of demographic transition. Briefly explain two measures that the country should take to achieve sustainable development. Take into consideration the definition of sustainable development, which is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future. Right, so what can the country do to achieve this? They could use appropriate technologies that are eco-friendly and resource efficient. The country could promote the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle in advocating for the minimization of resource use. Next, 
Table three shows the birth rates and debt rates for a country over a five-year period. Use the grid to plot suitable graphs for the two rates and write a title for the graph in the space provided. So what I've done here is I constructed a graph using the data here. Again, I'm going to remind you that you need to have a title. It's worth one mark. You need to label your axis. So on the y-axis, you would have the birth and debt rates, right? You'd also, and then on the x-axis, you'll have years. Next, calculate the total mortality rate of the population if there are 15,231 deaths and a total population of 10,787 people. You simply divide the debt rate by the total population and multiply that by 100 and you'll arrive at 7.6. See, Zambia has a population of 16.6 .6 million people and an annual growth rate of 0 0.3. In 2016, there were 720,000 live births among women 20 to 24 years old. There's also a total of, of 3,100,000 women age 20 to 24 years old. They want you to calculate the total fertility rate for the 20 to 24 age group in Zambia, 232.25. You need to calculate the doubling time for Zambia, 233.33. Number four, table four shows the per capita water consumption of five Caribbean countries. It says use the grid to draw a bar graph for the information in table four. Table four, here is my Figure, and you must be tired of me saying this, but you must have an appropriate title. Your axes must be labeled. Next question, define the term per capita water consumption. So this is the average amount of water each person in a particular country uses on a daily basis. And part two, suggest an explanation for the difference between the per capita water consumption in Guyana and Barbados. It could be that there was more industrial or commercial use of water in Barbados than Guyana. E, discuss two ways in which each of the following may impact negatively on the environment of Caribbean countries. Pollution. For pollution, pollution can affect biodiversity, causing species depletion and extinction. Pollution can affect the quality of surface and groundwater. Introduction of exotic species. So recall an exotic species is one that is introduced into an ecosystem outside of its native range. So when these species are introduced into the environment, they can become competitors or parasites to the native species in the ecosystem. C, briefly explain one measure that a Caribbean country can take to mitigate the impact of exotic species on the environment. They can start by being proactive, right? So the local environmental ministry in a country can implement education and sensitivity programs to make citizens aware of what these species are, what they do to the environment, as well as how to reduce the populations of these species. Five, Forest Hills is a small rural area located in the mountains in a Caribbean country. Residents are involved in small-scale farming on the hillsides, as well as the production of craft items made from materials found in the forest. The area has historically experienced several seasonal problems, landslide in the wet season and forest fires in the dry season. In 1998, the residents came together, sourced funding, and were able to replant forests and fruit trees, as well as cut and maintain fire traces. As a result, Forest Hills has been fire-free for the last 15 years. The residents gain additional income from having group tours of their neighborhood and hosting workshops for others about ways to deal with forest fires and landslides. First question. To find the term natural resource, so natural resources are materials created in nature that are useful to humans. 
Part B lists three tools which were used by the residents of Forest Hills for natural resource management and conservation. So I observed something here that the residents were involved in small scale farming on the hillside. So I, I noticed that they were conserving the land there on the hillside. So that's a sustainable agricultural practice. It could have been something like um, terracing, right? Secondly, I noticed that in 1998, the residents came together, sourced funding, and were able to replant forest and fruit trees, as well as cut and maintain face fire traces. That's another way. And thirdly, I noticed that the residents host workshops for others about ways to deal with the fire, forest fires and landslides. They discussed how one of the tools identified in B can improve natural resource management and conservation. So let me go back to education, how they host workshops for others. So when this is done, the individuals who visit Forest Hills can appreciate the importance of natural resources more. A group of university students studied the developments at Forest Hills and conducted a survey in 2015 to determine which of the four environmental problems the residents were most concerned about. The results were compared to the results of a survey conducted in 1995 and are illustrated in figure five. Study figure five carefully and answer the following questions. Use the data provided in figure five to calculate the percentage of the residents of Forest Hills who were most concerned about landslides in 1995. Do is divide three into 28 and multiply that by 100 and we shall arrive at the percentage here which is 10.71. Using the information in figure five, justify whether the resident group in Forest Hills were effective in managing and conserving the forest area. We are observing here is that the environmental hazards were greatly reduced. The concern for these hazards, by the way, were greatly reduced. In 1995, forest fire was the major concern and that was completely eliminated from the survey. The concern for landslides decreased. Similarly for drought. Next question, state the two environmental problems of greatest concern in 2015. And these were flooding and drought. Right, now on to question six, the final question of the paper. State two of the major categories of natural resources found in the Caribbean. So I hope you are not thinking about the categories of resources overall. So that would have included consumptive, non-consumptive, exhaustible, inexhaustible, renewable, non-renewable. But this is talking about natural resources, which is a concept itself. Major categories include biodiversity, ecosystems, water, minerals and hydrocarbons, soil, landscape and seascape. And then part two says provide one example for each of the two categories stated above. We have terrestrial ecosystems like the forest, aquatic like coral reefs, right? For water, waterfalls like the lovely waterfalls of Guyana rivers like the lovely rivers in Jamaica and for minerals and hydrocarbons bauxite in Jamaica and gold in Guyana all right part three at a community lecture on solar energy a member of the audience expresses the view that solar energy is best described as renewable resource the lecturer however says that solar energy is more appropriately described as an in a Sourceable resource. Explain why the audience member and the lecturer use the terms to describe solar energy. So if you should think about it, both terminologies are correct. The sun is indeed a renewable resource, right? Because the sun's energy can be harnessed and used, right? And it can be replenished at a faster rate 
than what is being consumed. In the case of the lecturer, the sun is an inexhaustible resource because energy from the sun will never be exhausted. Part B, figure six illustrates gold production in Guyana from 2000 to 2017. Study figure six carefully and answer the following questions. Part says calculate the reduction in gold production from 2000 to 2005. So here I have placed the value for 2000 and the value for 2005. And all you need to do is subtract this to arrive at 5000 kilograms. Part two, state the general trend in gold production illustrated in figure six. So looking at the graph, the trend speaks to a fluctuation in gold production. Right? Prior to 2015, in which year was the maximum level of gold production achieved? It has to be 2013. So just one reason why gold is an important natural resource in Guyana. Gold is an important natural resource because gold mining provides employment, it generates income to the citizens of Guyana. You can also include that gold is an important natural resource for Guyana because it provides foreign exchange. And the final question says, while gold is an important natural resource in Guyana, its production can cause negative environmental impacts. Discuss one negative impact of gold production on the environment. Mining sites are often contaminated with several kinds of heavy metals that come primarily from processing the ore. These heavy metals can be washed into the water bodies and the soil, and these contaminants are toxic to aquatic animals, right? Birds and other wildlife. Also, toxic chemicals can persist and accumulate in the food chains. All right, guys, that was the end of this paper. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and share with your peers.